What we want to look at in this demo is how we can handle and manage return values to control execution flow. What we have here is a simple customer services class and on that class there's one method called create and what create is going to do is build a new customer object from the DTO that's passed in. It's going to then call off to a dependency for an address builder and create the mailing address to attach to that customer and if the mailing address equals null we're going to throw an exception. If it doesn't equal null, we're going to continue on and actually save the customer. So we have a couple of different tests that we need to be able to build here. One test for the code execution path that goes into throwing the exception, and one test that skips over the exception and continues on to run the customer repository save. So if we jump over to our test, we're going to look at the first test, which is the throwing of the exception. So you can see here that we've defined our test and we're using end unit. So we've said that we expect an exception of the specific type that's going to occur. This allows our test to pass even though an exception is being thrown inside of it. And then we've gone and started to do our arranging for our mock tests. The first thing that we've done is created a DTO to be passed into the system under test. And we've created a couple of mock objects for the dependencies. The two dependencies are our customer repository and our customer address builder. We've also created our system under test, passed in the two different dependencies using the object so that we get the right type passed in. And then below that in act, we've actually executed it. What we haven't done here yet is controlled the return value that is coming back from the address builder as it's being executed in the customer service. So this address builder dot from is going to return something that we need to control. By default inside of mock, if we don't define what it's going to return, it will return the default value for the type that is coming out. So if we go look at from, we'll see that from returns back a type of address, so a complex type. When mock runs into complex types, it returns back a null value. If we go into our code here, we're going to see that the null value will actually throw the exception. So if we go to our test and actually run this, it should pass for us. And there we go, it passed. The address formatter returned null, which dropped into the if statement and threw the exception causing the test to pass. It's not very clear that that's what's going on though. So what we want to do is explicitly state that that's what we want the address builder to return. So it's easier to see when we look at the test, how we expect the code to behave. So what we can do here is the mock address builder setup and inside of setup, we'll say when, when the from method is called and it is any customer to create DTO, what we want to do is return a specific value. In this case, we're going to want to return null. Like the setup, everything is going to be handled by a Lambda expression. So we can say a zero parameter Lambda expression will pass in and we'll return back from it null. So now we've explicitly said that when the from method is run and we don't care what the parameter is that goes into it, we want it to return a null value. Now if we run this test, we'll see it passes still. It's just it's a little clearer when we're inside of the test body itself. There is a second test that we care about here and that second test is what happens if it's not null. So what happens if we're not throwing an exception? So if we jump back over here to our test, we've got a test down here and we can see that inside of the mock address builder we've done a setup and it's going to return a new address. So it's going to return an instantiated object back from it. When that happens, we can go down and we'll see that there is the assert, verify, and we'll say that save actually executes. So if we run this test, we'll see that it passes. The interesting thing that we can look at here is if we go back into our test, we'll jump to our customer services, put a breakpoint on this piece of code, and we'll go back to our test and we'll run it in debug mode. So we should see our test run through and breakpoint there now. And what we're going to look at is see what the return value actually is from the 
call to the customer address builder. So we can see if we look at this, we've got our mock object, which is defined as a type castle proxies because it's a proxy object that's built to be a fake. And we'll look at the customer mailing address and we can see that it's actually a address object. So it's an address object that we have returned back. It's instantiated, it doesn't have a value passed into it, but it's a real object. As a result, it fails on this code execution and we can go ahead and have it step through and we can see that it hits the customer save for us. One thing that we may need to do inside of our mock test is ensure that the mock object is going to return back different values every time that it's called inside of a test. In this case, we're looking at testing this create method on the customer service class. And inside of it, we're going to loop over everything that is passed in as the parameter customers to create. And each time that we do that, we're going to build a new customer object and assign it a new ID. That ID is coming from the ID factory create. And in this case, we want to see that we have a different value for each ID as we go through this test. So let's go over to our test and take a look at it. What we've built up in our arrange section is the list of two different customers to create, a couple of mock objects that we need, one for the repository and one for the ID factory. And then we have our system under test, the execution of it, and an assertion that the create is being run at least one time. So what we need to do is go in and create the code that allows us to have a different value returned back from this mock ID factory every time it's called. So to do that, we're going to first define a variable to hold the value that gets returned back. So value from the mock ID factory is an integer, so we'll just say var i equals one. And to set up the different return values, we'll go and look at the mock ID factory set up and build our Lambda for it. And in this case, we're looking at the create method. It has no parameters being passed into it. So we're just saying we create up for that. And then on it, we'll say it should return a parameter value of I. So that takes care of the first one. Now we've got it returning back a value of one the first time it's being called. How do we deal with the second one or the third one or the fourth one? So we just do a callback and inside the callback, we again say we want to return a value and it's going to be equal to I plus plus in this case, because we're simply working with an integer. If we were working with something more complicated, we could be using a collection of values or a preset of data that we have that we've pulled out of a file that it wants returned back. There's any number of different things we could do here. But in this simple case, all we need to do is increment that integer value. So now every time that it calls the mock ID factory setup, it's going to return back the value of I that we have inside our test. That value the first time is going to be simply one. Every time after that, it's going to be the previous value plus one more. So if we go ahead and drop over to our system under test and we put a breakpoint on line 28, we'll go back to our test and we'll run this in debug mode we should see this loop through and hit that breakpoint twice because we're passing in two different values to the system under test. So the first time that we run it, customer ID is equal to one. If we go ahead and step through, we'll see customer ID on the second loop is now equal to two. So this is how we're able to alter the value on each call inside of a multiple call scenario for our mock object.